Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about left-hand turns, the complexity of long left-hand turns, why they're dangerous, and what you can do, the habits you can create to make yourself safe when you're doing that, and the correct procedure for passing a driver's test. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rich is here from Maine. Limitless is here. Hello. Other people are here and tuning in, and we're getting going. I know it's, I apologize for postponing. I was away <laughs> in on Vancouver Island in Victoria and doing some work down there, and I got caught up in that. So, moderate to severe drought in Maine. Interesting. So, so we'll get going. Uh, Corey's here, Bricks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator. And if you have any questions about passing a driver's test, any questions about driving, what, whatever, we can help you out with that. DC's here, Gorilla's here, hello, hello, hello. So generally the way I do it, I do a bit of a presentation. It's gonna be a shorter presentation tonight. And then after that, we'll spend the remainder of time answering questions and going over stuff. And we can definitely help you with getting a driver's license, being a safer driver, and starting a career as a truck or bus driver and Tim is here from Winnipeg so we'll get going with the presentation here let's give over to that Katie's here as well hello all right so tonight talking about left hand turns mostly left hands it turns at complex intersections but you do want to start doing these in residential areas uh, that way <coughs> excuse me do these in residential areas so you can get used to scanning you can get used to. I just realized you probably can't hear me because the microphone's way over there. Oh, there we go. So, start your left hand turns in residential areas. That way, you'll get used to the steering wheel. You get used to observing, looking for pedestrians, and those types of things. So, those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. Uh, was a truck driver in the 1990s, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997, and earned my degree, my graduate degree, in 2006 in legal history, which is the study of policing courts and prisons, and my expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic. And you can learn more about that over at the Smart Drive Test website. There's an autobiography over there. So why are left-hand turns complex? Why are they dangerous? Why do they pose such a challenge to new drivers? Uh, first of all, they are dangerous because you're crossing oncoming the path of oncoming traffic. If you misjudge the gap, the vehicle either has to brake or they're going to run into you, which if they run into you, then it's a T-bone crash. And we can talk about this in question and answer period a little bit more, but cars are not designed to protect you in a T-bone crash. And the unfortunate part about this is that if you misjudge the gap you get t-boned in an intersection on a left hand turn the person in the passenger seat is usually the one that's going to be fatally hurt they're usually going to die in the crash and it's really terrible because it's often a husband and wife who are in the front seat or your friend or someone else and it it just leaves horrible guilt for uh the person who's driving the vehicle so you got to judge the gap and this is not something that is lends itself to teaching uh, online on video it's something that really you should be working with uh, an experienced driver and going out and doing this and then they can help you out with the doing that as well uh, as I said in the introduction start in residential areas this is going to help you with learning uh, the steering wheel how much you have to move the steering wheel how what your speed control is going to be like and helping you to find your landmarks and when you're turning left obviously you're looking for pedestrians on the cross street and any other obstructions. You're looking for right-hand turning vehicles as well because no, in terms of right-of-way for left-hand turning vehicles, right-hand turning vehicles have the right-of-way over left turning vehicles. All right, so shoulder checking, observing. You're gonna shoulder check for every turn when you're turning left, when you're turning right. Uh, anytime that you move the vehicle sideways, whether you're moving the vehicle in forward or in reverse. <coughs> So when in doubt, uh, always shoulder check and always when you're turning the steering wheel, you're always going to be shoulder checking in the direction that you're moving the vehicle. All right. So when you're waiting at a left hand turn and you're looking to prepare to do that, you're going to put the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line. As I say to students, this 
uh, you're committed to the intersection, but you're not in the intersection if it goes wrong. I know there's other schools of thinking and you're working with driving instructors and other personnel and those types of things. And they're going to say, oh, no, move right up into the intersection. Uh, don't move up into the intersection, okay? You don't want to be in that intersection. And when, then when the gap uh, presents itself, then you move forward into the intersection to meet that gap. And that way you've got a bit of speed and you can quickly move through the intersection and out of the path of oncoming traffic. All right. So going on red, going on yellow, especially at complex intersections, this is a reality. This is something that you're going to have to do. The, you're going to be sitting there. You're going to be waiting. The light's going to go to yellow. As soon as the light goes to yellow, move forward into the intersection. Check, double check, triple check that the traffic, the oncoming traffic is actually in fact coming to a stop. And then expediently make your left-hand turn. And as well, know that you own the intersection. If you're in that intersection, you own it. You have to make that turn. But you can't lollygag there. If you lollygag, especially on a driver's test, you're not going to pass. The, uh, be successful on doing that. And they're going to say you were in a on a red light all right so when you're making left hand turns especially when you're coming out at a T intersection watch the right hand turning traffic because they may put their signal on they may forget so don't pull out on a left hand turn until that right turning traffic commits to the right hand turn because you may pull out and they've decided oh I'm not gonna make my right hand turn and then they drive into the side of you so know that and be looking for the right hand turning vehicles as well so remember pick the best answer not necessarily the not necessarily the right answer there we go all right so back over here tim is here my friend tim and uh tim says gap judgment deteriorates for seniors so these turns can be a problem for them too yeah and it is and if you're not safe or don't feel safe doing left hand turns you could always go around the block and do three right hand turns i mean that's the other way uh that you can do it and come back and go straight through the intersection but you know a lot of people aren't going to do that they're still going to do their left hand turns because especially if they've got somebody else in the vehicle and they're driving it's going to, they're going to be a bit embarrassed other people are going to be going what are you doing so this is <laughs> you know left hand turns are difficult and you definitely need to you know if you're learning and you're having trouble with that make sure that you're working with somebody who's a veteran driver or somebody who's a driving instructor or whatnot all right, so Bobby, my instructor during last lesson said that when turning, you should be close to the curb to cut off the bicycles so they don't surprise you. Is that a good advice? Uh, Bobby, it depends where you are in the world. Uh, bicycle lanes in some places will have dotted lines. And when they have dotted lines, then yes, you can move into the bicycle lane and you can cut that lane off and stop bicycles from going on the inside of you, which is what your instructor is saying. Here where I live and in other places, the uh, bicycle lane has a solid white line. And that solid white line means that you can't cross over into that lane. So when you're making a right hand turn with a solid white line between you and the bicycle lane, you have to stay out of the bicycle lane, check, shoulder check a couple of times, make sure there's no bicycles, and then make your right hand turn. So it's there's two ways to deal with the uh, bicycle lanes on a right hand turn. but the thing is is that it's going to be dictated by the road markings on the roadway so make sure you take note of that as you're coming up to the up to the intersection all right uh let's see who else here bathfinder hello my friend sb Catherine. hello hello how to turn left at an intersection so step-by-step -step instructions corey's put that video up thanks for that corey kiana uh 10 how far do pedestrians have to be on the crosswalk before turning generally with pedestrians for the purposes of a driver's test, you want one lane of space between your vehicle and the pedestrian. You don't want to get any closer than that to pedestrians. In some cases, and I have seen in some handbooks, and I do need need to redo that video about how far you should be from pedestrians, it should be at least six to eight feet. Uh, the reason you want a good buffer of space between your vehicle and pedestrians, especially if there's children or younger people, you know, you never know what pedestrians are going to do. They could be going across the roadway and get halfway across and then decide they're going to come back. So, you know, have an ample buffer of space. And what I'll do is I'll look that up because I've seen that. I'm pretty sure it was the Oregon handbook about they had specific distances about how far you should be from pedestrians. And I'll post that on the community tab for you. Okay, uh, Margaret, should you line up your left mirror with the curb or turn lane before turning the wheel all the way? 
Yes, Margaret, I know what you're saying. So, um, some people have difficulty about when they start turning the vehicle left, at what point when you're proceeding straight into the intersection. And the rule of thumb is, and this is a general rule, obviously this is gonna take a bit of adjustment when you're learning how to do left-hand turns. If it's a single lane road, then you wanna line up yourself, your person, with the curb of the road, and that's when you start turning. And then every subsequent lane, it's the lane before the turn that you're going to start turning. Now, of course, this is going to vary depending on concrete medians and what down, whatnot down the center of the road. So that's gonna depend on where you're gonna be turning and whatnot, okay? Uh, seven C's, I would watch out. Uh, either way, they tend to not even follow the, their, their lanes. <laughs> yeah, uh, people are gonna do something unpredictable. It's not a matter of if they're going to do it, it's a matter of when they're gonna do it. Uh, limitless, do I have to stop for a three seconds at uncontrolled intersections? Uh, where is this myth coming from? You have to come to a complete stop, not for three seconds or any period of time. That's, I've heard this before. I don't know where this misinformation is coming from that you have to stop for a certain length of time. You have to bring the vehicle to a complete stop. And what I mean is, is that when you come up, the vehicle is two pieces. There's the chassis, the wheels, the axles, and the frame, and the, the body of the vehicle. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna come forward the body's going to come forward, you're going to let your foot off the brake slightly, the body will settle back down over the chassis, and the vehicle will come to a complete stop. When the vehicle comes to a complete stop, uh, then you can proceed to go through the intersection, but you have to come to a complete stop first. All right. Um, Kiana, I think I miss I missed something in the conversation here. Kiana passed your driver's test with a perfect score of 100 last Wednesday. That is simply awesome news, Kiana. I, I was pretty sure you'd passed your driver's test. That that's really awesome. Kiana, where did you pass your driver's test in the world? Uh, really awesome. Bobby, if you come to a four-way stop on a road test and other drivers get confused, who has the right of way or don't know the rules of the road? What is the best solution? Uh, Bobby, when it comes to any situation with your driving, especially on a driver's test, if you're not sure what's gonna happen or you can't deal with the situation or you just don't know how it's gonna sort itself out in the case of a four-way stop and who's gonna go first, just stop and wait. Within 10 seconds, I know that seems like a lifetime when you're on a driver's test and somebody's watching you do that, uh, but within 10 seconds, somebody will decide to go and then you can sort it out and you can figure out uh, when you need to go. Uh, with four-way stops, of course, you know, first person to arrive, person on the right. Uh, person on the right is kind of, it's loosey-goosey, but it's more one lane is going to go and the other lane is going to go and then right-turning traffic has the right-of-way over left-turning traffic at four-way stops. And for the uninitiated, for those learning how to drive, four-way stops can be a bit daunting, you know, the first few times you get there. After you know, you've been through them a few times and, you know, or you go down and you sit there and you kind of watch what traffic is doing and cars and those types of things, you're going to figure out pretty quickly, you know, who has the right of way and whatnot. So know that. Canna, Atlanta, Georgia. That is great. They're in the peach state. Got her driver's license. Awesome. Uh, Snoopy, should I turn on the emergency flashing lights while reverse backing? Uh, where are you doing your driver's test, Snoopy? Are you doing your driver's test in California? Is that the back along uh, the curb thing that you're doing. Generally, I recommend that if you're on a roadway and you're doing something goofy like backing up, which <laughs> I, that's my personal feelings about what they're doing there in California, and there's other traffic around, then yes, you should have your four-way flashers on. But that is a nuance, that is a detail question that would be best directed to a local driving instructor because I don't know. And I'll tell you why I say that. Uh, when I came here to Vernon and I started teaching tractor trailers, uh, we had a turn up on the lookout here, back out onto the main highway. And so we're in a tractor trailer unit. There's cars screaming down the highway here at 110, 120 kilometers an hour, which is like 60, 70 miles an hour. And, you know, we're pulling out on the roadway. And, uh, going from a dead stop in a tractor trailer. So I told the student the first time we did it, I said, Put your four ways on, that indicates the traffic behind you that you're going slow. Went on the driver's test and the examiner said to him, no, don't do that, just put your signal on. So 
what I think you should do in terms of safety and what a driving examiner wants you to do, oftentimes those are going to be two different things. So as I said, that's going to be a question best directed to, to a local driving uh, instructor. Uh, Nancy, hi Rick, is there a divider on a road and a school bus on the opposite lane in a residential area? I am driving on the opposite lane. Do I need to stop? Uh, most places you don't, Nancy, unless you're in the state of New York. Uh, if the only the state of New York likes to be different, uh, and you do have to stop if there is a median down the center of the roadway. But everywhere else, uh, my understanding of uh, school bus laws is that no, you don't have to stop there. Okay, uh, Kiana, blah blah blah. Google, Kiana. Okay, excellent. How is the test in Illinois currently? We currently think the test in Illinois is a shortened test, so instead of being 15 to 20 minutes, uh, the test is sort of 10 to 15 minutes there in the state of Illinois. Uh, I don't know if any other smart drivers have uh, further information about the state of Illinois and what's going on for the test there uh, in that state, but uh, that's basically what's going on. Okay, so... Before we stop, uh, Canada, what is the best advice on changing lanes when other drivers speed up and not let you get in the lane? Canada, the best advice for that is to simply let them go. Just take your foot off the throttle, slow down a little bit, and let the car go ahead and then pull in behind them. If they're insistent that they want to go even though you have your signal on, uh, then just let them go. My other thing about that is a lot of people, and you may or may not be one of these people, <laughs> is that uh, people are having challenges changing lanes. They don't put their signal on. They, they, they're like, they're like looking in the mirror and I've seen, and I, and I say this because I've taught truck driving with people, with drivers who should have their license, should know how to do that. And you see them looking in the mirror and they're looking in the mirror and, and it's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm waiting for an opening so I can clear, so I can change lanes. And I said to them, yeah, have you thought about putting on your signal and asking? <laughs> so make sure that when you're changing lanes that you put your signal on because if you don't put your signal on other people don't know what you're doing and they can't help you out if you put your signal on then you've asked them and they're gonna try and help you out for the most part you know remember the 80 20 rule about life right 80 percent of people are doing the right thing most of the time you know 20 percent not so much and those are the kind of the 20 percent that we need to have to we need to look out for all right Okay, so yes, go ask at the DMV in Illinois. They'll be able to tell you that. Uh, Jessica, tips on not scraping the curb when pulling up to the curb. Uh, yes. <laughs> go and do some of the slow speed maneuvers with the pylons. Uh, Corey will put the video up for you on uh, exercises for beginner drivers with those uh, 36 inch, one meter tall pylons. And then that way you've got a tall thing that you can see, not a little short curb that you're trying to hit. And you can work to get as close as you can and you can figure out where your vehicle is in space and place. And that will teach you how to pull up to the curb without running your sidewalls along the concrete and having them all scraped up and whatnot. Okay. Uh, Levi, I live in the Fraser Valley, British Columbia and have my road test next month. Anything I need to look out for tips? No, Levi, pretty much the same thing there in the Fraser Valley, uh, you know, driving well. Uh, Fraser Valley, are they going to be taking you down into Chilliwack and into those places? Is that where you're going to be taking your driver's test down through there? Uh, okay, Katie, uh, if you're at a stoplight and in the wrong lane, would you suggest going to the wrong, the wrong way or trying to get over to the lane you need to be in? Uh, Katie, what I would suggest is if you're in the wrong lane at an intersection, don't try and get over to the lane that you need to be in. I mean, unless there isn't any, any, there aren't any other cars there at the intersection, but the, for the most part, if you messed up, you're not in the lane that you need to be in. Don't do something unpredictable by forcing your way through the intersection or forcing your way into the lane that you need to be in. Cause then you're just going to be unpredictable and you're going to increase your chances of being involved in a crash because somebody else isn't going to see you and makes a mistake. So the best thing is just go through the intersection, turn around and come back and then do it again, right? And it happens to the best of us. Uh, Levi, Chilliwack and Abbotsford. Yeah, so it's all good there. Levi, um, you know, fairly built up areas with big trucks and those types of things. Just, you know, good space management around your vehicle. Lots of space away from the big trucks and whatnot. Uh, definitely, you're going to have to know how to hill park. So know how to do that. Look that up and whatnot. Okay. <laughs> Tim, going for dinner. 
Have a great dinner, my friend. Uh, Levi, also, me and my friends love your videos. Thanks for helping a lot of us pass. Uh, Levi, you are most welcome. We're so happy we can hear that we can help you out and get your license. And you're going to do awesome down there in the Fraser Valley. All right. Safia, I failed my driver's exam for almost going through a light that suddenly changed yellow. What are tips to avoid this? My test is this Thursday. So, yeah, yellow lights can be a bit tough because... For the purposes of a driver's test, red lights and yellow lights mean the same thing. They both mean stop. And it can be difficult because as you found out that sometimes you can, you know, come up to the intersection and all of a sudden the light turns yellow. And it's not that the light turned yellow, but the fact that you're in the intersection and now when you're in the intersection, the examiner looks up through the windshield and can see that the light turns red. That's an automatic fail on a driver's test. So it just takes a bit of practice of driving around. Uh, I do give you some more tips uh, in the video on how to deal with yellow lights and Corey will put that up for you have a look at that but it's just a bit of practice and you know sometimes when it comes to yellow lights you're gonna have to lock it up uh, we had the same goofy thing in the tractor trailers it was like up and just hard braking to get that thing stopped and make sure that you're looking behind you and making sure that the traffic behind you is also coming to a stop uh, before you lock it up on a yellow light okay Google, uh, <laughs> uh, Google, I have, uh, yeah, I talk pretty fast, but I have videos as well, and make sure you have a look at those videos, and you can also, when you're watching on the replay, you can actually slow down the speed that I'm talking, so that'll help you out, okay, Katie, okay, I tend to go the wrong way anyway, unless there is no one around, I always have my GPS on anywhere I go. Awesome, Katie. Yeah, and you're going to get better at it too, Katie, as you're driving around more with navigation and those types of things. Uh, you know, at the beginning, it's going to be a little bit challenging because you don't know where you're going and whatnot. But just, if you know, if you do get lost, don't force your way into some place. You know, don't just drive off the freeway on the exit or whatnot. You know, go past, come, come, turn around and come back. That's going to be a lot safer for you. Uh, I'm at the gym right now. Left turns are a bit of a struggle to me. Uh, skirt, yes, and it's not just you. Most new drivers are going to struggle with the challenges of left-hand turns, so know that. Jeremiah, uh, do you think someone with a learning disability can be a truck driver? Uh, Jeremiah, I absolutely think that somebody with a learning disability can be a truck driver. I've worked with uh, a number of students who became truck drivers who had a learning disability, and as long as you know the, in the instructor knows you have a learning disability, the company that you work for, you know, there's lots of good jobs out there that, uh, you know, you can have with driving truck and uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's going to demand the base, the, the minimum to you for uh, that job. Gorilla, <laughs> I sound tired. Gorilla, I am exhausted. It's not just tired. I'm beyond, I'm, I'm just beat. I had to go down and look after my rental property. I just spent four days of just crazy amount of work so and i just drove back so yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty exhausted today uh dc you take your test in two weeks that's brilliant catherine jeremiah you can do anything you put your mind to and that is absolutely true and jeremiah if you want to become a truck driver uh you can do that and just you know if people are not helping you out just go and find somebody else that will help you out because there are always people who are willing to help you out and move you forward okay Minor, uh, hey, I got a question. How do you know what direction to go? I'm saying there's some direction you can't go, and especially, can you explain? Okay, don't uh, know that, Minor, what you're asking me. Can you rephrase the question for you? Uh, gorilla, gotcha. Yeah, you did get me. <laughs> you know that saying. You can fool some of the people all the time. Uh, some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Google, good night. Time to sleep. Yes, Damon. Uh, many salutations, Dr. August. You sound a bit under the weather. Yeah, hang tough. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm a bit sick too, so it's not helping. Uh, Mizzy, uh, so when there is a four-way stop and everyone stops at the same time, who goes first? Uh, Mizzy, that's not generally going to happen, okay, at four-way stops. Uh, it's unlikely that two cars are going to stop at the same time. But then eventually what happens is, is that one person just goes, okay? Uh, and if you get there and other cars have got there at the same time as you, just wait. Wait like 10 seconds 
and one of the other vehicles will go and then it'll start to move through the four-way stop. The other thing that I recommend for new drivers, because I know that four-way stops are a bit crazy, uh, just go down and sit at the corner for 20 minutes and watch the traffic move through the intersection and take note of, uh, you know, right turns, left turns, how they're moving through. But generally, excuse me, what happens at four-way stops is, is that one lane of traffic goes and then the other lane truck goes and then the other lane goes. But then again, you've got turning vehicles, left turning vehicles and right turning vehicles. And then you get throw pedestrians in the mix and then it gets a little more crazy. So that's why I always recommend to new drivers who are dealing with four-way stops to just go down and have a quick, uh, you know, spend a bit of time there and just watch traffic move through it. Uh, Katie, I'm nervous uh, taking the driving exam because I have a fear of the state police. Uh, they don't actually, Katie, uh, I know in Kentucky, Kentucky is one of the states that has state police who administer the tests and you're, I, you're in Arkansas, right? Uh, they don't actually wear the uniforms when they're administering driver's tests there, do they? 10, I'm aiming to take my test here in Edmonton by the end of the month. Need to work on the left turns and avoiding potholes. <laughs> yes, we have a video on that too, on how to avoid potholes. All right. Hurricane, uh, what do you think of unprotected left turns where the driver enters the intersection and wait for oncoming traffic to clear? Hurricane, on any left-hand turn for any driver, I do not counsel them to move into the intersection. Always with the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line. And that way when the gap begins, to, when you see the gap coming that you're going to turn into, then you move into the intersection to meet the gap. That way you've got a bit of speed and you can move through the intersection faster and you're in harm's way for a less period of time okay so yeah you're okay so katie yes you're in arkansas so both arkansas and the state of kentucky both have the state police administering the driver's test which is interesting there and uh as i do they do they wear their uniforms because that would that would seem a bit weird with a police officer sitting beside you testing your driving i would be intimidated too katie so you know don't that's not weird. Okay. Christian, uh, minor, don't go against traffic. If you are not sure, stay on the right lanes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mizzy, what do you get into teaching? What made you get into teaching drivers? What made me get into teaching drivers? Uh, I was an over the road truck driver and I wanted to, I was trying to figure out how to get off the road. And you know, then I did the big path of going to university and getting a graduate degree and whatnot. And, uh, started the YouTube channel and came back to teaching people how to drive and it's been very successful and very fulfilling. So it's been, it's been great. That's kind of the short version. Uh, Kiana, thank you for your videos. They helped me on my test because I was so nervous and scared to death, but I believed I could do it and I did. Thank you. Yes. And that's awesome. Kiana, we're so glad that we could help out and be part of your success and all the best. If you have any questions about driving after you get your license, uh, drop back and we'll definitely help you out. Okay, uh, Damon, I tried to ask pin binning whether the police in the UK would challenge me if I executed an opportunity left turn on red in the absence of pedestrians and cross motor traffic. Don't know what that means. Uh, Katie, I don't know. I know that the examiner for the learner's exam were extremely rude toward me taking the exam on a computer. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't get that. Why staff are belligerent. I don't. I mean, life is too short and to be that upset about life. I don't get it. Truly blessed. I know the basics of driving. Should I pay for driving school? Uh, blessed. If you have a good mentor to work with and teach you to drive, uh, then I'm not saying no, that you shouldn't get professional driving lessons. Uh, I always do recommend that if you are not going to take driving instruction lessons, then you uh, spend some time and uh, get a practice driving test with a local driving instructor. That way, you know, it's going to pay great dividends due to the fact that they're going to give you feedback. They're going to take you on the test route and they're going to tell you what skills and abilities need to be strengthened for you to be successful on your driver's test. Okay. Uh, Hurricane, is it illegal to make a right turn but swerve back into the the right lane. You mean like doing a button hook where you make a right turn, you weave out and then come back in? That's compl that's comp that's not even da legal. It's dangerous. Don't deviate out of your lane when you you know 
left lane to left lane, right lane to right lane. That's what's going to keep you safe on the roadways. But people do it all the time, unfortunately, uh, you know, and it just makes it dangerous at intersections. And keep in mind as well, more than 40% of traffic crashes happen at intersections. Okay, so you do you you want to be as predictable as possible at intersections. You don't want to be doing goofy things, uh, deviating in and out of lanes and those types of things. It just makes you unpredictable. Okay, uh, blessed it costs a lot of money. Yes, driving instruction is not cheap. It's 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 dear. It's expensive, and uh, but you know it's well worth the money. But like I said, if you you know there's a lot of information out now on the internet. And if you have a good mentor, somebody that can work with you, and you can simply do the things that you need to do to pass your driver's test, then I would recommend that you do that. See how it's going, you know, after a week or so maybe, and then maybe see how you're feeling at that juncture, and then revisit whether you're gonna get uh, driving lessons or whatnot. Okay. Uh, I don't, you don't have anybody, but I will practice as a go driving, okay. Uh, hurricane, a lady did that in front of me and then honked at me when I went by her. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Especially if there, it tends to be a trait of older drivers, Hurricane, that they will do a right-hand turn, they'll swing out, and then they'll come back in. And I don't know wh why that is. Uh, and, you know, I've worked with older drivers who've done that. Uh, maybe they just spent two years, you know, too many years driving their big Ford F-350 and they feel that they need a lot more space than what they actually do to get the vehicle around the corner. So, yeah. Uh, Christian, I get why some examiners are like that to see if you can drive under pressure. Uh, yeah, we Christian, we don't no, need to know <laughs> whether students could drive under pressure. They're already under enormous amounts of pressure on a driver's test. Uh, you don't need the added layer of driving examiners being buttheads. Uh, students are already under enormous amounts of pressure just by the very fact that they're being tested. You don't need somebody who's snipping at you and griping at you and being belligerent and whatnot. You know, I just, my personal thing is, is I don't, I just, that's not the way life should be. Katie, what's the percentage of getting into a fender bender in a parking lot? Uh, Katie, that's pretty high. <laughs> <coughs> It's pretty high in a parking lot because there's lots going on, people backing up, people walking around and those types of things. So just be careful in a parking lot. Uh, be vigilant with your scanning. Uh, make sure that you look before you move the vehicle. Check your backup cameras, check your mirrors and those types of things. Do your 360 degree scans before you're backing up and whatnot because yeah, there's a lot of fender benders in parking lots. It's It happens. Uh, Christian, UPS is doing that. Oh, to get hired. Okay, well, but Christian, that's that's a different that's different than taking a driver's test, right? When somebody comes to apply for a job at UPS, you already expect them to be able to drive. So what UPS is testing for is the fact that so say for example you deliver a parcel and the person is a crotchety old woman who just gives you the gears, well, UPS is testing to see if you emotionally can get back in the van and drive safely and not have not hang on to that. That's what they're looking for. That's completely different than a driver's test because you should already have driving experience. You should be able to drive the vehicle. You have to understand that people who are going for a driver's test are not at a high skill level of being able to drive. They're very much entry level. So they're simply focusing on just doing the basics. And what I say by that is, is that, I mean, you could get most drivers who've been driving for two or three years in the vehicle and you can play the music and, you know, you talk to them, have a conversation, those types of things. Most new drivers, you can't do that, especially, you know, on left-hand turns and types of things. They, can't, they just cannot uh, even deal with that level of uh, complexity and that, that much stuff going on. So, yeah, those two things are different. Uh, Damon, do you know where I can get a yes or no answer as to whether I would get in trouble with the UK police if I make a left turn on a red from a complete stop, no cross pedestrian motor traffic? Uh, I haven't heard left turn on a red. So this is a right turn. Uh, I don't know, Damien. 
uh, what I would do, what I would suggest Damon is to go on one of the uh, UK driving uh, channels. Conquer is one of them. There's a couple more. Uh, you can go on one of those channels and you could ask them that answer. As far as I know, you can make a left turn on a right on a red light. Uh, I know you can in Australia. I don't know for sure about the UK, but there's always places that you can't. Uh, but like I said, go on the English channels, the UK channels, the driving channels, and they'll be able to answer that question for you. Okay, Margaret, uh, try some ginger and cayenne pepper tea for that cough. <laughs> I hope you feel better. <laughs> Thank you so much, Margaret. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something. Uh, blessed, I will probably go to the parking lot and practice parking and turning and speed, but I know I will be good at driving because I did practice on the street. So we'll have to build a confidence. Go for it. Yeah, and the other thing, uh, blessed, with practicing in the parking lot with the pylons and those types of things, that is going to improve your overall driving ability. It's going to make you a better driver because it teaches you mastery of the primary controls and it teaches you where your vehicle is in space and place. And if you spend some time, you know, maybe a couple hours one day and a couple hours the next day, maybe three or four days, then you can get out on the road and you can do what you need to do on the road and you're going to do it with a much higher level of confidence. Okay. Uh, Christian, great advice. I really appreciate you giving us advice. Thank you. You're most welcome, Christian, and really happy that I can help out. So uh, just quickly, just review what you need to do for the purposes of a driver's test in terms of left-hand turns and those types of things. Every driver's test, regardless of class, is four things. It's observation, communication, uh, observation, communication, speed management, and space management. And it really should be space management is going to be first in terms of those things. You have to manage space around your vehicle. You can always manage space in front of your vehicle. And Corey, I'll put the video up for you on space management around your vehicle. Space management trumps speed management. Uh, so just, you know, if you can't do the speed limit because traffic is backed up and you have to manage space around your vehicle, then you're going to do your space management first. And stopping at the correct stopping position at stop sign intersections before the crosswalk or before the stop line, before the crosswalk line, or at the edge where the two roads meet. Those are the three stopping positions. And as I said, it's coming to a complete stop at controlled intersections. It's not about a certain amount of time that you have to be there. So uh, space management, stopping in traffic so you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. And again, as I say, space management. If you're not near anything, uh, you're not near other road users, it's less likely you're going to get into trouble or have a conflict when you're driving. Second one, uh, speed management, posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less for the purposes of your driver's test. And make sure you get the vehicle up to speed as quickly as possible. So if you come out onto a road and you make a right-hand turn, make sure you get it up to 30 miles an hour or 25 miles an hour, whatever the speed limit is. Uh, 50 kilometers an hour as quickly as, as you can. Uh, so communication, you have to communicate effectively with other traffic using your lights and signals, your horn, hand gestures, all five signals. Don't tell them to number one on a driver's test. Eye contact. And the most important way that we communicate with other road users is the position of our vehicle on the roadway. And then observation. You have to shoulder check minimum two times for every turn. Every time you move the vehicle sideways, you're going to change lanes. You have to shoulder check. So it's simple 90 degrees to the left or to the right, whichever way you're moving the vehicle. Uh, 360 degree scan before you put the vehicle in reverse and start backing up. For every vehicle length you want to stop, do your 360 degree scan again on your reversing. So that's observation. And when you're driving straight down the road, make sure that you have a scanning pattern in place. You're looking far down the road, in check your center mirror far down the road and check your instrument panel far down the road check your left wing mirror far down the road both shoulders and check your right wing mirror and your scanning pattern is directly linked to your speed management so people say oh can i go five miles an hour over on my on my driver's test you can but for a very short period of time because you should be checking your instrument panel every eight to twelve seconds while you're driving so your speed is always going to be adjusted while you're driving because it's directly linked to your scanning pattern. Justin, uh, do you lose points on the driving test if you don't back up with your hand on the passenger seat? I'm taking my test in Ottawa. Okay, so 
it's just easier, Justin, to put your hand on the back of the seat when you're backing up because you're going to put one hand on the steering wheel. Uh, it's really tough to get around to look out the rear window uh, if you don't put your hand on the back of the seat. And sometimes you're going to actually have to lift up and turn your hips so you can look out the back window. If you do have a backup camera, you can have a look at it, but it's not your primary line of sight. For reversing, you have to look out the back window, and it's really tough to do that if you've got both hands on the steering wheel while you're trying to reverse. It's just, it's, pro it's not really practical. Gabrielle, space management over speed management, good reminder. Excellent. Uh, Damon, I f have found it a lot easier to keep the vehicle track in a straight line if I hold them at 7 and 5 than at 9 and 3. Okay. Anonymous, 7 and 5 seems an odd way to hold the wheel. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Uh, but at one and the same time, 8 and 4 is new. The kind, Now the kind of advocated position of holding the steering wheel because of airbags, right? That your airbag, your arms don't get tied up in an airbag if it does in, you know, in the unlikely event that it does deploy. Uh, Damon, staying back so that the drive wheels of the vehicle in front of me helps a lot when I'm both moving and, and stationary. I call that pacing the drive wheels. Yeah. And it's, you know, Damon, it's just such a great thing, especially when you're in traffic. Uh, and if you're in slow traffic and you keep that space all the time and your attention wanes, then you're not going to be up into, you're not going to, you know, it reduces the chances of you rear-ending the vehicle in front of you. Catherine, uh, well, the examiner asked if we know how to change a battery or a tire. Can we lose points if we don't know how? Uh, Catherine, and no, they're not going to ask you any of that, Catherine. <laughs> uh, and Corey will put up the video for you. Anybody who's going for a driver's test, uh, make sure that you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. Make sure all the stuff is working. Uh, actually, Corey, if you go over to the Smart Drive Test website, you can put up the, just find the page on that and uh, they can get the checklist over there. Uh, because, you know, my vehicle right now has a, has a taillight out. And if you show up with a taillight out, it's not so much during the day, but if you have a brake light out, they're not going to take you out on a driver's test because the vehicle is deemed unsafe. Okay. Uh, Monica, do they ask you to turn on the windshield wipers and lights? Uh, Monica, they do. So the mini pre-trip inspection that the examiner does when he or she comes out of the building and looks at your vehicle, they get you to turn on the headlights. They're looking for the license plate on the front of the vehicle. They're making sure that the tags are valid. They're making sure that the windshield and there isn't any damage on the vehicle. If it is raining, they will ask you to turn on the windshield wipers. They'll go around to the back. They'll get you to do both turn signals and the brake lights. Uh, make sure that the license plate is affixed to the rear. Uh, they'll get you to bang the horn, make sure that the horn is working. And of course they want to get in the vehicle. They want to make sure that the footwells aren't full of fast food wrappers and the seatbelt works and the door works and those types of things. So make sure that you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you show up for your driver's test. As well, if you're going with a driving school, same thing. Ask the driving instructor whether he or she did a pre-trip inspection on the vehicle before you show up for your driver's test. You don't want to be denied your driver's test because you had a brake light out. That's just so demoralizing. It's just like you get there, you're all pumped, you're jacked to do your test, and then the examiner comes out and walks around the back and is like, oh, you got a brake light out. I'm sorry, we can't take you out. You'll have to reschedule. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's no recourse for that, okay? Uh, J. Rowe, what's the proper technique for driving down two-lane roads where there's parked cars on the right side? Do we stick to the left or do we bob in and out between the parked cars no you stay in the left lane you definitely you're not going to weave in and out of the parked cars if there's a line of parked cars there just move over to the left lane and drive in the left lane uh margaret how do you learn to change a tire or battery would would like to know before i take a long trip uh the tires and batteries uh there's margaret there's tons of videos here on youtube it's really not that difficult uh the other place you can figure it out is to change a tire is to look in your owner's manual it'll tell you how to do that stuff uh the other thing margaret that you know for the it's fairly inexpensive to get AAA or caa here in canada roadside assistance i think it's like 80 dollars a year personally for 80 dollars a year <laughs> i would rather call somebody else out and change the battery uh the tire yeah i might do that myself but uh you know for the for the, for the it's inexpensive and you know I would counsel you to do that as well I think with the eighty dollars a year I think there's some 
it's like up to 200 miles that they'll tow your vehicle to a shop or something like that so yeah it's really good uh it's money money good money spent Okay, uh, Catherine, 12 days to the test, so exciting. Yes, Dpinder. last week I failed my driver's test, class five. Uh, sorry to hear that, that's, yeah, it's definitely a bummer. But uh, watch the video on, I failed my driver's test and I give you some tips and strategies on getting back up, taking your driver's test again and being successful. Okay, excellent, awesome. Christian, I applied for UPS, personal vehicle driver do you have any advice for me to make my deliveries quicker faster and more efficient uh, yeah Christian so basically you know if you know where you're going before you take off for the test it's uh, I know for you because you're gonna be doing a lot more deliveries and those types of things you're gonna be listening primarily to your uh, but just you know take the time and be organized have your packages in the vehicle in a specific order uh, I'm sure that UPS has a system that they want you to follow and they're gonna plan all of this stuff out for you because you know they're gonna give you a list of packages and they want you to try to go in a circular route they don't want you to you know drive out to the farthest place come back to the nearest place and then back out so I don't know what the procedure is in terms of UPS whether they make you do that route planning or whether they actually have it you know I'm sure that they have a system in place where uh, they put the packages in, they type in the addresses of where they're going to go and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it, it takes you in the thing. But the thing is to basically be organized. You know, don't get crazy in terms of driving. Uh, you know, take your time. Know that you're gonna, it's going to take a certain amount of time to get there. Uh, be careful where you park the vehicle, you know. And uh, I'm sure UPS has procedures and whatnot in place. Listen to what they're telling you. Do your training and those types of things and uh, all of that will help you out gyro what's my favorite car <laughs> maserati maserati that's a nice car uh monica i'm in california my permit expire expiration date was the 30th of august i've read it's supposed to be extended just want to make sure i don't need to do anything uh before my driving test appointment on friday uh monica i would just get in touch with the dmv because i can't give you i don't know the details of that information about whether it's been extended but I'm sure that it has with all of the craziness that's going on in the world. I'm certain that your uh, learner's permit has been extended. Okay. Andrew, just now seen this notification, Rick. Hope you're doing good this evening. Uh, yeah, Andrew, a little under the weather, but yeah, for the most part, doing well. So all good. Uh, Kiana, what is your advice for merging into traffic on a highway interstate at a good speed? I merged good and stayed calm, but was still nervous. Yeah, Kiana, that's going to be that's going to be a little bit that's going to be par for the course at the beginning here because merging is there's a there is a lot going on <laughs> and you're traveling at a very high high rate of speed actually Kiana watch for the video on Wednesday uh, actually that's the video I'm doing on Wednesday and uh, you'll see the look on my face because I was doing this in Vancouver because I wanted more traffic uh, for doing this video because it needed it's needed to be reshot for a while and I come out of the rest area on the first merge that I did and it was a really short acceleration thing and I kind of come out and I'm like oh look <laughs> and I'm like yeah I need to get this going here really quickly so yeah just take your time get your foot into it and match the the flow of traffic and get out onto the highway uh Gur, uh thanks for your help I passed my class one test on the 29th of September thanks again that is so awesome Gur. uh do you have a, a CDL job lined up? Or are you going to work driving truck? Uh, Andrew, I found out that my driver's test will be closed circuit. I made a trip to Finley, Ohio this past Sunday, so I know where I'm going. Excellent Thursday morning. And Andrew, how are you doing with the Ohio maneuverability test? Uh, I have that video as well. Corey will put that up for you as well. Depinder uh, examiner gave me feedback that I have to improve before gap and C1 speed maintenance. Okay, so you got to do some work with speed control and uh, improving space management around your vehicle and looking for the gap when you're turning and those types of things. So all really good. Okay, so yeah, so basically, you know, get all of that in place. And the other thing, Depender, that I would suggest is, is that before you go for your next test, book a practice driving test with a local driving instructor and he or she will take you out and be able to give you feedback on 
you know, if you're ready, if there's any skills or abilities that you need to improve, uh, they can give you some information about the details of what the, the test is going to be and whatnot, but it's money that's really well uh, invested in a great return on in, in there. So I would counsel you to do that. All right. So I, I think we're going to leave it there for tonight. As, as I said, I'm not feeling the, the greatest. So I think we're going to leave it there, but I'll just answer a couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. Jason, uh, you have any insight on how the driver's test will be for Chicago as of now, like what to expect three point turns, parallel parking and whatnot. So Jason, the test in Illinois is a shortened test rather than being 15 to 25 minutes. It's just sort of five to 10 minutes there in the state of Illinois. All right. So we'll wrap it up there. Thank you everybody for all of your questions, your uh, participation. If you have any more questions, leave us a comment down in the comment section there. Uh, you know, you can watch on the replay. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. I'll be more than happy to help you out. And uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, next week is Canadian Thanksgiving. So the live stream again next week will be on a Monday. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Yeah.